we do have a remarkable uh, planet, a, a remarkable world. However, if you want to keep it, you're going to have to understand what the situation is, and you're going to have to stand up for your rights. Um, and it's not that difficult, and yet it's very difficult. Um, I'm uh, just back from uh, Oregon, where the district court, the U.S. District Court, one level below the Supreme Court, uh, a suit has been filed by 21 young people, including my oldest grandchild, and uh, one old person, that's me, <laughs> against the federal government for not looking out after the rights of young people. Um, and um, I, I, just today, had a paper accepted uh, for publication, which I wanted to get done before this hearing, uh, before the judge at the district court, but she has not yet issued her uh, decision. The, the, um, the court case is basically we're asking the government, we're suing President Obama and uh, science advisor and other uh, branches of the federal government for not protecting the rights of young people um, by having a plan for phasing down emissions, uh, fossil fuel emissions, at a rate that would allow uh, climate to be stabilized by the end of the century and avoid what will otherwise be uh, very disastrous consequences. Because frankly, the situation now is different today than it has been for any prior generations. We older people could always expect to do better than our parents. We had, we had, uh, we could see a path to a better life. Now frankly, that's not going to be the case for you if you don't pay attention to the situation. Um, this, uh, this, we, we had uh, a hearing uh, a few months ago before this same district court, a, a different judge, it, the uh, uh, federal government is joined by interveners, uh, which are basically the fossil fuel industry, American Petroleum Institute and other fossil fuel industry, uh, siding with the government and asking the judge to dismiss the case because what we're asking is that government have a plan to reduce emissions several percent a year. That is actually what is needed if you're going to stabilize climate uh, this century. Um, and their argument was, well, that's implausible. With business as usual, we don't see how to do that. Um, but uh, the, the judge said that he was troubled by our ask because it was difficult. But he said, on the other hand, the assertions that are made about the impacts of climate change are so enormous that they are, what he said, beyond the pale. And therefore, he said the case should go forward. And now, it ha however, the way it works, there has to be a second judge certify the case. And um, that's what I expect um, this judge to do. But just to make sure, I wanted to write this paper, uh, which clarified the situation. The title of the paper is Young People's Burden. Uh, requirement of negative CO2 emissions. Because what is happening in the United Nations and the, the, plan, the climate negotiations is basically uh, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has just assumed, well, 
They, the science now has made clear, you cannot stay on with high fossil fuel emissions and have any chance of avoiding disastrous climate change unless you start to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. So their scenarios all assume that young people are going to somehow figure out how to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. And their, their principle, you know, in, in some scenario, someone had put in something called BECS, bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, uh, is one, you know, assuming that you're going to grow biofuels over a large fraction of the agricultural land of the planet and then burn those biofuels in power plants, capture the CO2, and find some place to bury it. Um, that's, uh, that's a lot of bull. It's, it's, not, it's not going to happen. Uh, and so, but what we showed was if you, with, if you, even if you allow constant emissions, and th then the amount of CO2 that you'd have to capture and bury, the cost of that with the most optimistic estimates is someplace uh, between 150 and 500 trillion dollars. That's, that's a cost which you're going to have to bear. Even though the people who are getting the benefit from burning this fossil fuels, they're, they're not the ones going to pay. You know, so y you'd better understand this situation. And the, th the real, there's a tragedy here because the solution is not painful. Um, it's, it's been shown with economic studies that if you made the price of fossil fuels honest, by stop, stop subsidizing them and add a gradually rising fee to fossil fuels, which you would collect from the fossil fuel companies at the source, the small number of domestic mines and, and ports of entry. And if that money were distributed to the public, an equal amount to all legal residents, then the person who does better than average in limiting his fossil fuel use will make money. And as that fee rises, we will move to clean energies. That's the way you can do it. And without that, you're not going to do it. Because uh, coal is like burning dirt. And it's, it's the cheap, it's, as long as it doesn't have to pay its cost to society, just the human health costs of these fossil fuels is enormous. 10,000 people a day are dying from the air pollution from it. And if you, know, if you get asthma, the fossil fuel company doesn't pay for that. You have to pay that yourself. So we should, we should make the price of fossil fuels honest. And, the, uh, and, uh, and what's been shown in the economic studies is that this actually spurs the economy. It increases the GNP. So it's not costing anything if you do it in a sensible way in which you gradually uh, increase the, the price of fossil fuels and make their price honest. But uh, it's hard to get that done. You know, I explained this to Senator Kerry when he was a senator, and he said, well, you're right, of course, but I can't get one vote for that. I've got to buy, the way m money is what drives our politics now. Every, he, has to, he had to buy every vote. Uh, and so they ended up with a bill, Waxman-Markey bill, which was several thousand pages long, and every lobbyist who could write a paragraph got stapled into the bill. We can't, you can't do that. Um, so, but the thing is, the young people actually have the power to do something about this. Barack Obama was elected and overtook Hillary Clinton in 2008 because of young people. In Iowa, suddenly, uh, uh, young people in all 99 counties were knocking on doors for Obama. And, and he, he knew he, that he owed his election to young people. But they didn't know what to ask. They just assumed if we tell uh, the politicians, you know, what we, we want to have a stable climate, you know, among other things. 
Uh, but that's not the way, you actually have to understand what is needed. Um, and um, that, uh, that uh, is, uh, is not, uh, if you don't, if you don't get involved, then uh, we're going to go right on with emissions uh, continuing more or less as they are now. We, emissions have flattened a little bit in the last two years because the economy, global economy has not been so good, especially in China. So their coal burning has sort of flattened out. But uh, it's still going up in India and other developing countries. And, and there's no way for us to get on this downward path without a, um, uh, without a rising, without an honest price on fossil fuels. And it's in everybody's interest, including uh, the, uh, the developing countries. Uh, and China actually understands this. China uh, does not deny the reality of climate change. And they're actually seeing the climate change already. And they've got more than 300 million people living near sea level. So if we could just get the United States to cooperate with China, and, and I, both of them agree to have a rising carbon fee, it could be a global uh, solution because they would put a border duty on products from countries that don't have an equivalent carbon fee, and that would encourage other countries to have their own fee so they can collect the money rather than have us collect it at the border with border duties on uh, products from countries that don't have a fee. So it's a, it's a solvable problem, but politicians, I find, I, I thought, well, there's just something wrong with US politics where the fossil fuel industry is so powerful. If you turn on television now, you see these advertisements for, I am an energy voter. A and they're very persuasive, professional. They're pro trying to convince the public to vote for the fossil fuel industry, for the senators and representatives who will deny climate change and and uh, support the fossil fuel industry and make the U.S. energy independent. But unfortunately, young people will suffer the consequences. So, um, another thing we, so another, you know, another lawsuit we're gonna fire, start filing now is against the fossil fuel companies. Uh, same way, with the same expectation that they knew what they're, they know what they're doing. And so we may be able to get monetary awards from them, and I, as we did in the case of the tobacco industry. Um, in that case, I think the money should go to developing countries because we're going to need to suck as much CO2 out of the air as we can with improved agricultural and forestry practices. We can actually get 100 gigatons or more, and that will be a significant part of the solution but we need to support uh, the countries. To, most of this will need to happen in low latitude countries and developing countries. And so we need to support that. We need to have some funding to do that. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we, if, we, if we don't do this, uh, we will soon lock in, we can't say exactly how rapid, but sea level rise of of several meters. That means every coastal city will become dysfunctional, and more than half of the large cities on the planet are uh, coastal cities. So it's uh, it's a it's a really big issue for you because this is going to be in your lifetime. So you you know you you've got to understand this and then stand up for your rights. Uh, and it's not just the U.S. Constitution says uh, everybody has equal rights, including young people, and they can't be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And that's what's happening. And I think we're gonna win this case in the US court, but that's not gonna be enough. You actually have to understand what to ask for. And um, you know, we'll try to help you with the information, but you've got to be interested and, and, and get involved. Uh, uh, so think about it. <laughs>